Waiting for the red light. I might. No, the light did not go on. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. And welcome to the Scarborough Board of Education meeting. Tonight is Thursday, May 1st, 2014. May I please have the attendance? Mrs. Bailey? Here. Mrs. Gazzo? Here. Mrs. Lang? Here. Mrs. Massengill? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Ms. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Ms. Murray? Here. Ms. Agger? Here. Would you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Dr. Entwistle, do we have any adjustments to the agenda this evening? No, there are no adjustments. All right, then moving right along, your superintendent's report, please. Right. Um, I have uh, just a few items. Uh, first is a reminder to the school board uh, that we would like to extend an invitation uh, to all of you to attend the PLT Sharing Day, which is uh, what we call a celebration of teaching and learning in Scarborough schools. That's coming up because it is May 1st. Uh, this is on May 23rd, and the viewing of PLT presentations starts at 9 a.m., um, and there is a, a bit of a, a lunch that's provided at 11 a.m. So I hope you all can uh, join us. I know that those who were able to make it last year um, felt it to be a very worthwhile investment of their time. Um, second um, relates to U.S. news uh, releases um, related to the 214 best high school rankings um, in the country. Uh, there is some good news there uh, for the state of Maine, um, and it reads... Uh, two states on opposite sides of the country performed the best in the numerical ratings. Slightly more than 22% of Maine's eligible high schools earned gold and silver medals while on the West Coast. Slightly more than 22% of California's eligible schools landed gold and silver. And I'm pleased to say um, that for Scarborough, uh, we clawed our way into the top rung, uh, placing 10th in the state, so something to be very pleased about. Um, and speaking of news, uh, that's the U.S. news, um, this is more local news and we do have a, a, a bit of a clip uh, that was brought to my attention by Ms. Perry and uh, I took a look at it, it's a great little clip um, uh, about some local news and uh, we do have uh, athletes and uh, coaches here tonight. Uh, this is um, related to athletics. Give me the three goalies. They stand as one. It can be tough sometimes. There's always tough moments. And move together. Everyone moves on. We move on. United on all fronts. We're all in here as a big happy family. All right, gentlemen, we're going to change this up. Despite their different walks that brought them to the turf. I believe that this has a lot to do with their development and it's not just what happens in school. Everyone willing to strap on that Scarborough helmet plays for a purpose. Try to get the ball and, and get passes and scoring goals. They really stay with it! For Ted Prosack and Austin Petrus, they're on the field to defy their supposed disability. And my mom talked about autism a little bit. They don't hear that well, <laughs> and they can't speak. Not these two, especially Ted, a senior who's been playing since eighth grade. You gotta be careful with that camera now. This attracted me somehow. It just got to me. He has grown so much as a, you know, 
as a man. He really has. He really like takes the lead now. He gets in front of the lines during all the drills, and you know he really yells at everybody to make sure they keep going. Last one, make it count. But as much as he relishes that role, six more, Ted. Six more, okay. He's just as happy blending into the sea of red. I'm playing with my best friends. They're just one of the guys, and you can see how much that that means to them. Just to come out and you know have no special limitations or expectations put on them, just knowing that they're out here to be part of the group and they can come out and play and have fun just like everyone else. In Scarborough, Chaba Sukos News Center. Thank you, Kelly. Um, that's my superintendent's report. Thank you very much. Okay, now the chair's report. Okay, I'll give you the usual rundown. Um, a Wentworth update. I'll begin with saying that we're still on time, anticipating opening this fall, and we're still under budget and uh, doing quite well with that. So I'll start off by saying that there's been a base coat of paving that's been completed on the playground as well as the bus loop, and thank goodness that the weather broke for us because that's what's helped us along. So um, the gym floor has been installed. The generator for essential power, should there be a power failure, has been installed and undergone a test run. The porcelain tile floors are nearing completion. Punch lists are complete for the second floor, and it's ready to be moved into. So that's quite a big step. So fire alarm testing will begin next week, and that sort of wraps it up for the Wentworth. I have some upcoming dates that are, should be on many of the calendars here. Wednesday, May 7th, the Town Council will hold their second reading of the municipal and the school budget. So we're encouraging all of the school supporters to please come out, voice your opinions, let the Town Council know um, that you support our schools, and um, just please attend. So Wednesday, May 7th, in chambers here, 7 p.m. Again, May 7th, that's next Wednesday. Then we have Thursday, May 8th, um, the Scarborough Maine Visions Board Group called the All Boards and Committee Summit is something new that's starting with the town manager and the Scarborough Economic Development Corporation. And that is going to hold its first meeting from 6 to 7.30 at the Scarborough Middle School in the cafeteria. So anybody who's a member of a board or a committee, you could get in touch with Karen at SEDCO and she could probably supply you with more information. Tuesday, May 13th is the school validation vote from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. here at Town Hall. Please come support your schools, support your schools as we do. Um, we appreciate you coming out and voting. If you don't vote, nobody knows how you feel. So um, exercise your rights. And then Thursday, May 15th, we have our next school board meeting, which will be a workshop. And that's it for my report. And I'll turn it down to the students now for the students' reference report. I don't know who wants to go first. Um, at Wentworth School, we had four teachers who joined the Read to Succeed program, which is sponsored by Six Flags of New England. And as students completed six hours of recreational reading, which was beyond their classroom uh, requirements, they earned a free ticket to Six Flags and a total of 78 students were able to reach that goal, so we'd like to congratulate all who participated. Um, and then at the Eight Corners School, first graders uh, were able to complete projects about their heritage in different countries, and they were really well done with lots of great information about different places and cultures. And the second graders have been studying past and the present and, present and did a full unit on pilgrims and life in New England in the 1600s, and were able to visit the Tate House. Um, so they had a really great time learning about that. And so that's all I have. Uh, spring sports began the week of April 16th at the middle school, and they're off to a great season. Uh, the high school, um, Tuesday and Wednesday, April 8th and 9th, there was the Maine Band Directors Association Festival, where more than 1,000 musicians in grades 5 through 12 from across the state came to Scarborough High School to perform their work. Like always, it was a great success, and the students had fun. Monday, April 14th, there was a college admissions panel for high school juniors, where college admissions admission representatives spoke to students and parents about the admissions process and what they look for in prospective students. Uh, the fourth annual Scarborough Blood Drive will take place May 14th at Alumni Gym at the Scarborough High School from 11 to 6. This year, a number of Wetburn students will have the ability to volunteer at the Blood Drive under the direction of a Red Cross representative. Um, and 
next Monday marks the start to AP testing for high schoolers to looking to earn college credit in their classes. Uh, the last test will be Friday, May 16th. Thank you very much. Lots going on down at the schools. <coughs> next, we have 8.0 recognition. I will turn that over to Dr. Antwistle. All right, I have, um, I have two items I, I would like to start with. Um, some student representatives who are not here, um, they are uh, pretty exhausted still, but uh, we're going to invite them back at a later date to talk about their experience in Hawaii. Um, I wanted to share with the board that uh, the Scarborough High School Academic Decathlon team uh, did, did uh, uh, their competition in Hawaii, and um, that was during April vacation. They followed, uh, the team followed its 10th consecutive uh, state championship with an outstanding showing at the Nationals, uh, basically placing third in Division II, which is the medium-sized school category, and it was Scarborough's second best finish ever at the national competition. We want to congratulate uh, juniors uh, Isabel DeBias, um, Melissa Erkman, uh, for their team contributions, and then there were some individual honors, including junior, junior uh, Laura uh, Henney, uh, an honors student finished as the highest overall scoring student on the team, uh, and that won her a scholarship. Freshman Alec Lang was the highest scoring honors student in mathematics, also earned a bronze medal in music. Senior scholastic Sadie Terrell um, earned a silver, uh, actually two medals, silver medals in speech and interview. Senior Andrew Morrissey of Varsity who was the most improved student on the team and single-handedly responsible for over half of the score increase. Uh, he won a bronze medal in art. Junior uh, Mason Roach, a varsity student, scored a silver medal in mathematics. And senior varsity Alex Clary acquired a gold medal. Uh, last, uh, senior scholastic Beatrice, is it Brower? Brower. Mm -hmm. Brower was the star of the um, competition. She won the Kristen uh, Caperton Award. Uh, this is the prize given to one student nationally who overcomes personal obstacles to par participate in academic decathlon. She was chosen as the most inspirational by a, plan a panel of uh, judges from the U.S. Um, academic Decathlon Board of Directors. Uh, Beatrice earned five medals, uh, gold medals in economics, language, and literature, and music. My goodness, uh, uh, where she was the highest scoring scholastic student overall at the entire competition. Two sil silver medals in art and social science. The five medals placed Beatrice as the top overall scholastic in Division II, um, improving on her second place finish last year in the varsity class, and um, again, earning her a substantial scholarship. Um, Beatrice uh, also received a third scholarship chosen um, uh, as team MVP, um, and that was by a vote of her teammates. So a very impressive and um, uh, uh, performance of those individuals um, and that team as a whole. Okay. Second, I want to I do want to move on to um, athletics and um, honor uh, team performances uh, for the the season uh, recently finished. Um, but I wanted to invite uh, David Creech, uh, principal of Scarborough High School uh, to come up and start that recognition. Thank you, Dr. Whistle, and I appreciate the opportunity to share with you um, recognition for one of the valuable staff members at the high school. Recently at um, this year's Maine Interscholastic Athletic Administrator Association Conference, typically required um, of all athletic directors throughout the state. The Distinguished Service Award for all athletic directors in all eight conferences through the state was uh, awarded, and for our conference, which is the SMAA, that award went to Michael LeGage. If I may, I have to add that um, any of you who have ever gone to any event that Michael has put on is first class and top shelf. Uh, all the people who work for him exemplify everything that he models 
I'm very proud of working with him and the job that he has done, and we are very fortunate to have him as an athletic administrator at our school. Thank you. And I, I guess we'd ask Mike. Uh, now, you can't hide any longer, Mike. You're going to need to get up there <laughs> to the podium and, um, and help us with uh, recognizing our athletes. Well, thank you. Thank you. That was very nice. Um, <clears throat> I'm very pleased and thank you for the time to recognize some of the hard work of our winter coaches and our winter student athletes. Um, not everybody was able to join us today, but we have quite a few of them here today. So um, I want to give them an opportunity to come up and talk to you a little bit about the season and, and how things went. So and we'll start with Coach Ron Kelly with Girls Indoor Track. Thank you for the opportunity. First, I'd like to introduce a member of the indoor track team. Also, will be a captain on the outdoor team, uh, Kay Ledoux. Please stand up. Thank you. She also was one of the uh, well, the second highest scorer for us at the state meet this year, finishing uh, third and scoring six points in the pole vault. Uh, the good thing is that's the only points we're losing off from the team we had this year. We were a very young team, uh, rebuilding from two years ago. We made a drastic move this year. Uh, we had a very uh, inexperienced team because they were most, probably half the team was, or a third of the team was freshmen. Uh, we had definitely had one of the best freshman groups in the state. Um, during the regular season, we probably was in the middle of the road. We didn't necessarily go into the regular season meets because you don't get anything for regular season meets. It's the conference and the state meet where really, you know, you get recognized. And uh, I think we surprised some few, uh, quite a few teams. I don't think, uh, I certainly wasn't surprised. I told the girls a week before the conference that we had a shot at second place and things came true. We were second by a half a point over a team Westbrook that only lost to Thornton Academy during the whole season. So I was certainly proud of them and they certainly were proud of themselves with their performances. Uh, I went to the state meet and uh, Again, I told them, you know, a perfect day. We could surprise a few people, and I think we did. Um, it, not like in the past when we were on a string of eight years that we won quite easily some years. Uh, this year's state meet probably was the most uh, uh, close as far as from first to 15th place example. We were in eighth place, but we were only 13 points out of second place. Um, so, you know, a lot of teams were very close. And, again, we're only losing six points. So, And with a, another excellent class coming up next year, the experience of the girls that we had, um, I think our tradition of being there at the top should be right there next year. Um, we also had numerous girls on the team, whether it was individuals or relays, that were conference all-stars. So um, things are looking up. We're going to be taking some hits outdoors. But, again, we're rebuilding for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Coach David Mills with Alpine Skiing. Thank you for having us up here tonight. I'd like to just give you a little overview of the, the Alpine Nordic program. Uh, I was one of the founding fathers that started the program eight years ago with uh, Kurt Jepson and we started as a middle school program to develop into the high school program. So with that being said, I have uh, Abigail Mills and Matt McAlary, our two senior captains for the team. Uh, with the Alpine skiing, we have both disciplines of giant slalom and slalom. So each night there'll be a different race. And this season, we just finished off our first, we had first place last year, boys and girls. This year we're in second place, being off two points with the guys. and only about five or six points off of the girls. Uh, we had a few injuries this year that kind of set us back, as well as uh, the weather was extremely cold, which made it difficult as well. But um, this year, uh, Abigail won all races in the regular season but one, and uh, she went to the, with the state meet. We didn't fare so well. We had some injuries that, that kept us off from scoring higher. Uh, Abby uh, also went on to the shootout, the Eastern High School uh, shootout, and placed seventh and eighth in both disciplines to uh, move on to represent Scarborough in the uh, Eastern High School Championships, which is uh, a big race that's held in New Hampshire with all the schools uh, east of the Mississippi. So it was a huge accomplishment. One of the things that uh, you know, we do have, uh, we had about 20 uh, athletes, eight boys and 12 guys, 
And uh, with our program this year, our middle school, we have some new uh, athletes coming up that will help us out. We also have a young program, uh, young athletes, that will that help support uh, some better scores next year. So thank you very much. And uh, just remember that uh, athletics is just huge in this town, and a large percentage of our uh, students participate in athletics, which keeps them busy, occupied, they're good students and athletes, and it's a huge uh, advantage for the community to have them. So when you're, when you're doing your budget, please consider not reducing ours by as much as you can. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Coach Norm Gagne for boys hockey. Thank you. Um, we started our season with a simple goal in mind, and that was to make the playoffs. We knew we had a lot of holes to fill after uh, our gradu graduating class from uh, last season. We lost uh, two games last year, our first game against St. Dom's and our last game against Falmouth. Uh, so uh, with losing all the players that we lost, uh, my expectations were, were low to, to see us just get to the playoffs. Uh, and I know that Mr. LeGage will uh, attest to this. Our schedule was one of the toughest in Class A hockey. We not only had to play the powerhouse teams in the West, we also had to play the uh, powerhouse teams in the East. We had to play St. Dom's twice, Lewiston twice, and Bangor. Uh, I look back, and uh, uh, Mr. LeGage started our schedule off our first five games with St. Dom's, Falmouth, Thornton Academy, Lewiston, and Gorm. I looked at him and said, what are you doing to me? <laughs> uh, with uh, 13 players on this year's varsity, the, the first year varsity players, I was hoping that if we could make it three and two after the first five games, I'd be happy. It turns out we ended up four and one, and our only loss was to St. Tom's, who ended up in the state final this year against Falmouth and uh, losing to Falmouth. But uh, more importantly, I was very, very surprised, and I have to give a lot of credit to uh, our captains. Our senior leadership was outstanding. And to have a young team like we had, uh, you really need to have uh, good senior leadership. And we had that in uh, Cam Lewisell, uh Cam Brochu, and Jacob Gross. Uh, they took it upon themselves. Uh, I asked them what their goals were, and they said, we want to get back to the Western Maine final. And I, I told them again, I said, let's be realistic, and let's start with making the playoffs first. And then if we can do that, then we'll set our goal uh, to get to the Western Maine final. These young men uh, are just an outstanding group. Uh, they took the younger players under their wing, uh, built their confidence, made them feel uh, like a, a, a big part of the team, and uh, making them uh, understand their roles on the team. And uh, as the season went on, before you know it, we were in first place for most of the season. We played our last game of the season against Falmouth, and um, that was for first place. We lost the game. But I think that one of the things that uh, we learned as the season went on and through the playoffs, that uh, uh, one of the things I, I felt most proud of with this team was what they had learned through the season and how they came together uh, in the playoffs. <clears throat> We played a, our first playoff game, and again, with a young team, we just got by uh, Portland 6-4 uh, to four in a real close match. And then we played uh, Thornton Academy in the, in the semifinals, and uh, I couldn't believe the game that our, 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 uh, our team played. I looked at my assistants and I said, is this really happening? I mean, we were up 7-0. Uh, to, to nothing after uh, at the end of the game and I, I I think it was one of the most perfect games I've ever seen in hockey in my 39 years of hockey uh, coaching and 
I think that, uh, and then we went on to play Falmouth, and we did get to the Western Maine final, and we lost. And uh, one of the, the things that I think uh, was the most important thing, and again, how proud I was of the team, was the lessons that they learned. And I told them that in the locker room. I know there was a lot of hurt feelings, especially for the seniors. And I told them that although we lost, that they'll always remember this season. I know that in my 39 years, uh, I can't remember a more enjoyable season of coaching than coaching these kids uh, and what they accomplished. And they, they, I had to make them realize that nobody expected us to do what we did and uh, for us to beat St. Dom's in their rank. And I think that the lesson learned, and I wanted to bring this out, is that in the beginning of the year, it was hard for them to face adversity. A young team, when they face adversity, tend to pack it in or point fingers. And I think that when we had to go to uh, St. Dom's and play them in their rank, and they really found out what adversity was, Number one, when you play St. Dom's or Lewiston, you get a lot of verbal abuse along with the physical abuse. And in the first period, uh, we ended up taking a lot of retaliation penalties. We ended up being down two to nothing. And at the end of the period, we were going into the locker room. We had two guys in the penalty box for four minutes. So I got in the locker room and I told them that they had two choices. They could either point fingers and feel sorry for themselves, or they could push back and take the frustrations that they had and fuel that energy into a positive. And I says, you'll, do, you'll see that it'll do wonders for you if you do that. I says, now they may score a goal with us being five on three. But I says, after that, get to the point of what you can control. You can't control the refs, but you can control what you do. And win the one-on-one battles and play with the passion that you know you can play with. And just go out and do that, and you'll be fine. Six minutes into the second period, we tied the game at 2-2. And uh, we won the game in the last couple of minutes in the 3-2. And from then on, I think that... uh, that fueled us to where we went into that game against uh, Falmouth. We were down three to nothing right in the first period. But to see the change in the encouragement of each other, saying, "Don't quit, don't give up, <coughs> keep going," and we got back into the game. And fortunately, we had a lot of opportunities to win that game. But when you have the the goalie that they had that night, it was his night, and uh, he stopped five breakaways, and I wouldn't have, uh, if I had to pick the players to have the breakaways, they were the our leaders, Lozell, Jacob Gross, and Cam Brochu. but uh, unfortunately, uh, Dane Pauls, uh, the Falmouth All-State goalie, was equal to the task, and that that's, that's a, a lesson learned, but again, very, very proud of these players, and we've got a lot returning next year, a lot of sophomores, good sophomores, so... Uh, the future is bright for, for Scarborough hockey. Thank you. Uh, Brian Hoy with Boys Basketball. Uh, hello, and thank you for having me here. Um, Coach Tobias regrets that he can't attend tonight, uh, but he had a prior commitment uh, he couldn't get out of. Um, He did write something up for me to read, though. Um, Our basketball season was a great success this year. Um, Coming off an excellent season last year in which we graduated the majority of our varsity team, we didn't really know what to expect. Uh, We returned only two players with varsity experience. Despite that, we continued our success from the season before and returned to the playoffs. Uh, Lots of our younger players stepped into larger roles and flourished. We ended the regular season with a record of 9-9, which exceeded our league-wide expectations. Uh, Though our season ultimately ended with a playoff loss at Chevres, we experienced a great many highlights throughout the year that included back-to-back home wins versus Marshwood and Thornton Academy, a 17-point win versus South Portland that avenged a loss from earlier in the season. Uh, That win also got us into the playoffs uh, and knocked them out, Uh, and a 24-point win against a Stanford team that had won nine of its previous ten games. 
One of our senior captains, Matt Hartle, was selected by the league coaches as a second team all-conference uh, conference all-star, and juniors Milani Hicks and Nate Wessel were named rookie all-stars in the SMA as well. Uh, those two should be key members uh, of a very strong group of players returning next season. Uh, Coach Tobias and I have been coaching here for two years. Um, you know, I've, I've been his assistant for two years, and we really have enjoyed ourselves over here, and we really appreciate uh, all that everyone in this community does to help our basketball program, uh, and I just wanted to say thank you for all that. Um, certainly, as you know and as you've heard, we have great coaches. We have great student athletes. We're very fortunate here. Um, I bring up the next two folks. I just want to recognize them a little special. Um, first, Caitlin Cashman is going to come up and speak about girls hockey. And Caitlin also is a recipient of the Coach of the Year Award. Um, this year, girls hockey had the perfect season. They didn't lose one game and won the state championship. So, Coach Cashman. Um, so yes, he did a nice little intro, so we did have the perfect season. It's the season that any athlete kind of strives for, especially when it's your senior year. We went 21-0. and 0. Can't say that it didn't come with heartbreak from years previous. This is my fifth season here at Scarborough High School, and I have to say this is probably the most hardworking group of girls you'll ever meet. Um, ice hockey is a very difficult sport. You're trying to balance on, what is it, Norm, an eighth of an inch blade with a stick, with a puck, and you have girls who are trying to kill you. <laughs> and when you have a Scarborough jersey on, other teams, Kristen Murray and Hannah Snyder, there are two captains next year, they will attest that people want to make sure that we either will get carried off the ice or they will do whatever they can in their power to knock us off our game. And we had a very young team. We had 10 freshmen. Um, we had very strong leadership this year. Kristen Murray was also a captain this year. Um, and so it just clicked this season. And we went 21-0. and 0. Uh, My girls worked their butts off, and that's something that no one can take away from them, um, especially we had the majority of our practices were 5.30 a.m. So I live in Brunswick, so I was up at 3.30 in the morning to drive down. My other coaches live 45 minutes away, and these girls were all up at 4 a.m. on time at 5 o'clock in the morning in Saco, and it's crazy cold out and then even crazier cold in the rink, and there was no complaining. It was just like, all right, we're here to do work because we want to make states, and that's that. Um, and they did it, and it shows with our how well we did this season. Um, I'd just like to say Scarborough's really fortunate with the athletes that they have and the families that they have. I'm a clinical therapist in Lewiston, so I don't see a lot of positivity. I don't see kids who want to succeed or want to work hard, and the fact that that happens in this community says a lot about the kids they have. So I think it's important that we really focus on making sure that our kids get what they need, and if that means athletics, bands, music, whatever it is, the money needs to go there because, unfortunately, I see it on the other side. I get those kids who don't get that money. So that's that. And you'll hear about another great season. Also, Coach Derek Veyu, who uh, – with boys indoor track who also won the state championship th this year and also Coach Fayou, um, I believe for the second year in a row, um, was named Coach of the Year as well. Coach Fayou? Thank you. Um, and uh, it's awesome to be a coach in Scarborough. We have great kids, and my program has been very successful um, because of these kids. Um, this was our fourth straight state championship this year. And, uh, you know, I still have four more to go to catch Coach Kelly from uh, his streak there. So we're just getting started. But, uh, you know, we graduated one of the best classes we've ever had at Scarborough. And so, you know, coming back, um, I knew we still have a good team because the program's always strong. But uh, the team this year just came in with a purpose and uh, – you know, we never talk about winning a state championship. It's just something that the kids want to do. And so we actually never talk about it. And we just go about our business, and, and we expect a lot of the kids, and they work really hard. And, uh, you know, it's really, really important. And, you know, 
Coach Gagne, I talked about leadership, and uh, I had some great leaders this year. Um, I had uh, three senior uh, three senior captains and a junior, um, Cam Langlois, Alex Karam, um, Hugh McSorley, and Austin Duty. Um, and these seniors went all four years of high school without ever losing in uh, indoor track went undefeated every regular season meet uh, and every state meet, and that's quite an accomplishment for those seniors. And uh, they certainly show the way. Every year my seniors, um, you know, lead, and the younger kids see that, and then it just continues. And uh, that's very important in a program. Um, certainly the kids are a big part, and then um, my assistant coaches. Um, we're very lucky in Scarborough to have some of the best assistant coaches around and they've been with the program for a long time, and that consistency has been very important. Um, we have Steve Ross with the hurdles, Will Bertinay with the pole vault, um, and Curtis Damon with the shot put. Um, those guys have been here 12, 15 years, and you know, Coach Ross has been around forever, started the program. So um, that's, that's a very important part, and so we're lucky to have that. Um, um, getting into the season, you know, we were 54-0. and um, we won most meets by 70 to 80 points um, and uh, won the conference championship by 73 points. Uh, that was a big accomplishment this year considering the team we had coming back. Um, and then state meet, uh, we won by 30 and it was an enjoyable state meet. The last three have been really close and come down to the end and so it's kind of nice to be able to relax and enjoy the meet. Um, you know, you can't ask for anything more. The kids just want to win. It's that attitude, and, um, you know, they just keep doing it, and we've got a really, really, really strong team coming back next year. We only lose five seniors. Um, but those seniors were very important um, this year. Um, we had uh, individual state champion and Mike Pino in the shot put, and uh, an individual champion and junior Jacob Terry in the two-mile. Um, I was glad to have him come over from the basketball team. He certainly <laughs> did very well. Um, he broke the school record uh, at the New England meet as well. Um, so that was great. Uh, we also had uh, state individual uh, relay champions in both uh, the 4x8. That was uh, Alex Karam, Will Fowler, Lucas Forrester, and um, Jacob Terry. And the 4x2 team was also the uh, state champions, uh, Austin Duty, Cam Langlois, Jerry Kenny, and Max Ornstein. So, um, you know, the tradition continues. This was the 16th state championship for the boys program. Um, and it's, you know, started in 83. Um, and an impressive stat, uh, Coach Ross was telling me, is that um, since the program has started, the girls started in 83, that's what it was, that um, the boys and girls have won a combined 31 titles. So we've won half of the state titles ever given out in indoor track. So, uh, you know, the tradition is really, really strong. Um, you know, next year uh, we'll have a strong team, and certainly our focus will be to do our best at the end of the year. Um, so thank you for the opportunity to come speak. Thank you. And our other programs, cheering, swimming, girls basketball, and wrestling, all had outstanding seasons, all went to postseason play. Our coaches, unfortunately, with those other programs, were, were committed elsewhere this evening, so they couldn't be here. Um, but certainly um, all our student athletes and all our coaches work really hard to represent Scarborough in um, a humble, a gracious, and a sportsmanlike manner. Um, so thank you all, and congratulations to all of you. And right now I'll offer up a couple-minute break here so that anybody who wishes to leave may do so. So we'll adjourn for just a couple minutes and let anybody who wants to go, go. What I mean. Sure. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm
wondered who was coming. I didn't see Mr. Smith sitting behind somebody. <laughs> We'll resume our meeting now. We'll resume our meeting now with our new business, 9.0, and we'll start off with 9.1. We have the minutes of March 20th, 2014. Move approval is printed. Second. Any questions, corrections, omissions? Seeing none, all in favor of approval as presented, March 20th, 2014. Seven plus two, so moved. Um, then we have the minutes from April third, two thousand fourteen, which is our was our regular meeting that month. Move oh. approval is printed. Second. Any omissions, corrections? No. All in favor of approval as presented. Seven plus two, so moved. Then we have our minutes from our April fifth Saturday workshop meeting. Move approval is printed. Second. Any corrections, omissions? Seeing none, all in favor of a approved pardon? I did read them all. Okay. <laughs> See, seeing none, all in favor of approval is presented. Seven plus two. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to 9.4, and I will turn that over to Dr. Entwistle. Yes, um, this is uh, a motion before the board to approve a 2005, is that right? Yep, okay, a uh, $2,500 donation from Project Grace for the school nutrition program, and I believe that we have um, someone from Project Grace. And Bert that is Follinsby. Bert Follinsby, welcome. Thank you. Um, Project Grace is a local uh, nonprofit. Uh, we strive to improve the lives of our neighbors by identifying those in need and those willing to share their gifts and coordinating the interchange in a compassionate, confidential manner. In that spirit, Project Grace is pleased to award Scarborough Nutrition Program a mini grant in the amount of $2,500. Um, this isn't necessarily anything new. Um, we've been doing this for some time, and the intent of the grant is for uh, milk money, for snack, which is something that the federal program for free and reduced lunch doesn't cover. So it's intended for that, for other snacks, for classrooms, or for school nurses. And it also will cover um, occasions where students don't have lunch money or breakfast money. So we've been working with um, Judy Campbell for some time now, and this is a good arrangement. So I have a check here for you guys. Did you have any questions for me or anything? No, but on behalf of the board, the school nutrition program, the students of Scarborough, we would like to give our heartfelt thanks to everything that Project Race does do for us. Thank so you. Thank you very much, Bert. Thank you for coming out, and we certainly appreciate it. Thank you. So now we are looking to accept this donation. Move the will of the board. Do Move I have to a second? Approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor of approval as presented of the kind donation from Project Grace. <coughs> Seven plus two. We thank you again for the donation. Uh, next, we have, oh, I do see Ms. Van Ness there. Okay. Uh, 9.5, we have a 2015 trip proposal to France, April 17th through April 26, 2015. And, and Ms. Van can um, provide a, a bit of an overview. Good evening. Good evening. Um, first of all, thank you for letting me uh, come and fight for the French program once again. Um, just to point out, out of the six students that were here tonight, five of them are French students. So <laughs> I don't know if there's a scientific correlation to the stars <laughs> of the school, but 
Um, so next year, I'm looking for approval for a trip for next year, going to France, uh, starting in the south, landing in the south, the French Riviera, going up in the middle of the country, going through the castle region of the valley, and finishing in Paris. It's a trip uh, that will last 11 days. It is in um, during the time of spring break, so there's no missing school days. Um, the company <coughs> that we're dealing with is EF. They've been in business forever. They do a really good job. They are uh, all-inclusive. Uh, the price per student is of $3,220. Um, it includes insurance. It includes the travel, the guides. It also includes hotel, breakfast, and dinner. Lunch is uh, the only expense that the student, law, lunch and shopping money, basically, uh, the only expense that the students will have to incur. Um, question? Any questions from any board members? Uh, Jackie, yes. we'll start with. I have two, quite frankly. What is the n number of students who may participate? Uh, since we cannot advertise the trip until we have your approval, that would be uh, hard to, I, I don't oh, okay. know, honestly. I'm hoping for uh, a group of 25. And this, my second question is, will there be an opportunity for students to participate in fundraising to offset the cost? We haven't planned for fundraisers, but we are planning for the first meeting to ask the students if there's a possibility, if that's something that they want. We would be willing to do it with them, but we haven't planned any just yet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Donna, you had a question. Is the intent of French immersion, is this a language? Absolutely. Um, it is, uh, I'm the French, one of the French teacher. The other teacher coming on the trip is Renee. Uh, Nianuzzi, which is the other French teacher at the high school. The trip will be offered primarily to the students who are taking French currently. Uh, we're looking at the AP level four and level three students. Uh, we're looking for kids that have a certain level of the language to be able to order their own meal, uh, do their own shopping, uh, manage on their, although we'll be with them at all time, we're expecting them to use the language, yes. <clears throat> so would it be excluding any students not in that French program completely? We're hoping, yeah, we're hoping to fill it primarily with the French, um, with the students taking French at the high school because we're looking for this trip to be a uh, real life experience of the hard work that they've put in so far at Scarborough High School. Well, I was just thinking that you may have a student who already speaks French and is taking Spanish as their third language, and so that student wouldn't have a chance to go. No, that student can come. Could go. Yeah. Okay. We're looking for kids that have a certain level of proficiency okay. that would be able to um, take out of the trip what would the trip has to offer. So, of course, a kid that is taking Spanish because he already has a mastery of French would qualify. Absolutely. Any other questions? Chris? Um, uh, first, a comment. I, I did an EF tour when I was in high school to Austria, and it was probably one of the most um, eye-opening experiences of my life. It was the first time I went overseas, so it's a great opportunity. It's a great company, um, and it, maybe it's changed in the 20-something <coughs> years since I did it. Um, but but um, I, certainly the reputation was very good um, that, that I'm aware of. Um, our, I just want to be clear, though. Are you asking us to to fund this trip at 30? Not at all. Tonight's okay. purpose is solely to get permission to advertise the trip and open the trip. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Anything else? Seeing no other questions or comments, the will of the board this evening regarding the trip. I move approval. Second. All in favor? As presented. 
our students are thank saying you very yes, much. they would like it to pass as well. So mm -hmm. thank you, Ms. Van Ness. Um, I hope that your trip is a success, and we look forward to you coming back and letting us mm -hmm. know how many students you have going on the trip, and then when you return from the trip, we'd like to hear that as well. As well as chaperone information. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Yes. All right, uh, 9.6, we have the second reading of the FY 2015 budget. I will turn this over to Mr. Chiazzo, the finance chair. Uh, thank you. Um, first of all, I'll, I'll, I'd like to make a couple of personal comments. Um, I, I see the facilities leadership team sitting in the audience. Um, I did want to thank you guys for your efforts. Um, certainly putting the very thoughtful proposals together, the, the efforts that you made, and also the, the spirit of moving all of the children forward, not so much just focusing on your own individual facilities. So that's very admirable. We're very lucky to have you guys. So I, I wish we could provide for all of the needs. That's our ultimate goal. Um, I, I think, unfortunately, we all know the situations that we're in, but, but certainly without you guys and your tireless efforts, we wouldn't even have a good starting base. So thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the senior leadership for sure, for their, their guidance and support as we did move through this process and had to make some very, very tough and very difficult decisions. Um, that, that was very, very um, helpful. I do, and I know she hates this, but I do have to give a, a special appreciation to, to Kate Bolton, our business manager, who worked tirelessly weekends, long hours over April vacation to get us the information in very easy, simple, understandable formats that even I could understand so that we could convey the information appropriately to the public and to the, um, to the council. So thank you, Kate, for that. Um, the School Board Finance Committee has completed its review of the fiscal year 2015 budget proposal and is bringing its amended um, proposal to the full board tonight for a second reading and vote. These recommended and unanimously approved changes represent both adjustments made due to the improved data for cost projections as well as decisions made to scale back the original budget request. So I'd like to make a motion, uh, move approval to amend the fiscal year 2015 budget expenditures approved at the school board's first reading on March 20th, 2014 as follows. Reduce section A, base expenditures by $500,203. Reduce Section B, Investments and Program Restorations, by $235,000. Reduce Section C, Budget Adjustments, by $139,479. Reduce Section D, Debt Service, by $20,928. This leaves a total reduction of the general fund expenditures of $895,610 and results in a new expenditure total of $42,876,315. So we have the motion on the table. Do we have a second? second? Thank you for the second. Any questions, comments? I know we've all been over this pretty extensively. Are there any additional issues that anyone wished to ask about at this point? Jackie? How do I want to phrase it so it's understandable for everybody? Of the restorations that had been proposed, mm -hmm. and for the public, the restorations are those positions and or programs that had been reduced around 2010, uh, and we've been gradually trying to bring them back to at least that 2010 level. 2009 level, actually. Uh, how many of the restorations have, that we discussed in the beginning have been left out of this proposal? Well, there was originally. Well, before well, it came to us, there was over 1.6 million, I believe. Then it no, got. No, I, do, I don't want the. No, I don't want the amount. Oh. I want the number of positions. Oh, the number that we originally that were originally proposed. And what is that number today? The, well, the original first reading number was, uh, was 14, 14, 14.5. 14 14 mm -hmm. um, we've reduced that down to 10.6 Thank you. at this point. Those are people rather yeah. than 
program. Now, um, there was some funding in there that didn't represent a human being, so that's, fine. that's what you're That's asking. what I said, yeah. people but, and or programs right. but let's be that we were trying to restore that we spoke of in the first reading. Yes. Mm -hmm. so I, I just want everybody to understand where we are, yeah. that we're not making as much progress as we would like. Thank you. Yeah, and to that point, Jackie, I did want to, just to clarify that, with of the 40 positions that had been removed since 2010, we're not r fully recovered yet. So oh, no, even I with these 10 it. positions, we're not to the level that we were at in 2009. So we're, it's, it's, it's incremental progress. Hopefully it's sustainable progress, but it doesn't get us to the 2009 levels yet. Yeah, and just a comment about that. Uh, every year that we don't take that step means that it's going to cost more. And it's just like at your house, if you need a new stove and you put it off for a year or two, year or two, it's going to cost you more to buy that, whatever it happens to be, because prices go up. So I just think it's important for people to understand that uh, this, not, this is not really progress. This is not even treading water, this is still staying behind. And uh, that's a little frightening. Uh, we're doing the best we can, and our students and staff certainly are working as hard as possible under the leadership that we are so fortunate to have here in Scarborough. And with the people who have children or whether you have children or not, the education of your children is going to impact your ability to sell a house in this town because people want to bring children to a town that supports education. And it may not hurt today and it may not hurt tomorrow. But the longer it takes us to get where we need to be, the more precarious we are as a community. And, you know, the town council has a very difficult job, but the state is killing us. And it's going to continue to happen, and, and we can no longer really absorb those costs that are filtering down from the state lack of supporting a budget. Thank you. Okay. And just to clarify those positions again, it is not 10 new positions, it is five new positions, the remainder of which are already people employed in our district at half time or some other reduced amount of time that we're looking to increase. So, um, you know, again, I too feel that it's unfortunate that we are looking to reduce staffing again because I feel that the kinds of things that are listed here are the things that should have been satisfied years ago. They should not keep on coming up in front of the budget unless those things are uh, supported by a significant increase in population and students. That's why we should be needing things like a halftime music, a halftime art. Your children do not belong in study halls. We need teachers in front of them. We shouldn't have 12-year-olds with nothing to do for 45 minutes or an hour, whatever that class period lasts. They need teachers to be working with them. And so I, I we ha, you know, I feel we had we had to compromise. I, I understand that, um, but I, it is a, to a great disappointment that I see us um, backtracking on things that should have been handled. I personally feel this budget, the <coughs> kinds of budgets that come forward now, ought to have things on them like smart boards. We need smart boards we would like to be saying. Why do you need smart boards? Because we already have all the computers we need and now we need the smart boards to equip our classrooms. 
because towns around us have, are already there. So <laughs> it gets really frustrating to me to see that we have outstanding kids, we have coaches coming in front of us and saying, please don't cut our budget. Believe me, we don't want to cut your budget. We hate to see it going down. Um, and we feel strongly about advocating for the students in this town. Um, we're proud of all of our students that do incredible jobs, who go to academic decathlon, come in front of us, win this award, win that award. We find out we're 10th in the U.S. News and World Report, was it? Mm -hmm. and, and yet, and yet, when I as an ed educator am aware that our classrooms are as needy as they are, I'm just so disappointed that we can't make a better effort. So, you know, I'd, I'd say to any parents, any people in town who uh, wish to support education, now is the time to come out. We'll be meeting with the town council next Wednesday night to hear, you know, uh, what, what their thoughts are on our proposed budget once we, once we approve that. But uh, we stay aware, stay, stay alert, keep informed, and uh, voice your thoughts. Thank you. Kelly? Um, I also want to urge people to understand really what is in the budget and what people are asking for, the different schools. Um, <clears throat> one of the things we keep hearing is that, I can't believe we're going to get laptops for all the high school kids. Well, first of all, they need them. Second of all, every other town around here has them. And third, it's not in our budget. It's not even a proposal that we're asking for support on this year. So as terrible as that sounds to people, the reality is every surrounding community has that. We're way behind, and we're not even asking for it. So that's going to show you this budget has no fluff. There is no extra stuff in here. This is the bare minimum to keep things ticking along, and our kids are losing out. Every single year, we don't invest in the technology infrastructure and bringing back programs that were cut four years ago. Um, the list goes on and on, and these kids do not get a do-over. They are absolutely missing out. So I actually, I wish everyone would just read this. <laughs> you would know that we're serious. There is not extra stuff in there. It's absolutely all essential and not, not even nearly enough. Thank you. Jackie? I think an example of community support happened here tonight with a donation from Project Grace. And two weeks ago, uh, the Kiwanis Club and others, individuals, uh, provided food and, and, and money for the backpack program. Now, the ladies of the backpack program told us that they were making up 81 backpacks to send home with the children who need food during vacation time, 81 children in our school district. We offered to help. We, four Kiwanians who were delivering food, and we were told no, uh, two reasons. One, the most important is confidentiality. We can't know who the students are who are in need. And secondly, we were told uh, this is a donation to the town that the cafeteria people at Wentworth have been doing for years because this is not the first year that we have had a backpack program. So you, you get the people from Lyons and Kiwanis and Rotary and, and organizations such as is Project Grace helping with our children's nutrition when maybe that should be a town project? Who knows? But people aren't sitting back and letting our children suffer when they're hungry. Think about how hungry they must be at times when they get, cannot get the programs they need in our school system. And we're telling you this is what our students need. And it's up to you sitting out there in the public to help us provide it. 
This is a great town. It is the fourth wealthiest town in the state of Maine. And it provides the least amount of support in all of Cumberland County for our school district. Our teachers and administrators are not the highest paid by any means. We're holding our own at about the 50th percentile. But they're doing a wonderful job, and by golly, everybody who lives in this town should be thanking their lucky stars for the people who work here in the school department. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, I've got Jane. Yeah, okay, I'm going to say something. Uh, I think it's because I'm new, this is my first budget season, I think I um, really studied everything very carefully and looked through. I, I'm a person who likes to ask questions and challenge. I think uh, some people probably have the experience that and really know. I do um, really want to see, you know, we our schools, you know, make sure our schools are using the taxpayer money efficiently and we are doing the best we can to keep the uh, cost in line. And I think I, you know, I, everything, you know, I challenged a lot of, you know, the stuff that's in there and it's really, and got the answer I need and I really think this is a support, you know, budget we really need to support as a town and uh, uh, I I know you know we talk about our school is the tenth you know in the state, and um, for us I, I just feel like um, you know we have a lot of champ state champions. Um, tenth as a school is not really a good place for us to be, and we you know in order for us to be do better, and I think we need more support from the community and, you know, in more investment in order to get us kids and to, you know, succeed in, the, in a better shape. So and I hope we, we are going upward in that direction by having everybody's, you know, the community support. So, and, that's, and so I, I urge everybody to come out and uh, uh, voice, uh, you know, support us, of course, that's the vote. Uh, vote you know, two weeks from now, and, uh, and just uh, I th really want to give my perspective of what I think, you know, the school, you know, the, we have done the leadership and the finance community, we all have worked really hard to look at this budget, so I hope everybody will support us. Thank you. Um, I'll just piggyback on what Jane said. I think, you know, looking at this budget, you, you can't always look at the bottom line. The incremental increase doesn't push us to five next year. We need to continue to, to support a budget that moves us forward out of number 10. If we want to move up those ranks, we need to invest and we need the community members to, to get behind it and to come out and show their support next Wednesday at the town council meeting when we present it to the town council, and then we need them to vote. And I'm just going to make one little side comment because I didn't hear it from any of my other members, which surprises me is that we don't even fund our schools at the state average, which is, is sad to say. So uh, not funding at even the state average is uh, a tough one to swallow, knowing that we should be able to, and we should, and we should support our children, and we should support the school system. So that's all I'd like to say. If I see no one other comments, then we will take a vote on the motion to approve the amended budget of 2015 expenditures as followed that Chris repeated a little while ago. Mm -hmm. All in favor of approval as presented. Seven plus two. Thank you. So moved. I will turn it back to Chris again. Thank you. Um, I, I have a second, and this is the second of um, the three remaining motions of our budget process. Uh, I will move for approval to amend the fiscal year 2015 budget revenues approved at the school board's first reading on March 20th, 2014, as follows. Reduce the state GPA projection by $85,804 per the latest Department of Education figures released. Increase the allocation of undesignated fund balance by $100,000.
This adjustment to the general fund revenues increases non-tax revenues by $14,196 and results in a new non-tax revenues total of $5,952,970. The total tax request to the town presented at the first reading will be reduced by $909,806 for a total of $36,923,345. Uh, $36, okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, questions, comments? Anybody? Seeing none. All in favor of approval as presented. Seven plus two. So moved. Again, back to Chris. Uh, my third motion, uh, move for approval to adopt the fiscal year 2015 school uh, CIP budget as it was approved at the school board's first reading on March 20th, 2014. Expenditures are as follows. Technology, $648,500. Facilities and maintenance, $809,000. Transportation, $328,653. The fiscal year 2015 capital improvement expenditures will total $1,786,153. Okay. Any a motion on the table? The will of the board? Do I second. I have a second. All right, second. All in favor, any questions? Oh, I should start with the question piece. Anybody have any questions about that one? No, seeing none. All in favor of approval as presented. Again, seven plus two. So moved. And I know this will not be your last word this evening, Chris. However, <laughs> I will turn this over to you. Yes. You know me too well. Thank you. Um, so my final motion is uh, move approval to amend the fiscal year 2015 school nutrition budget approved at the school board's first reading on March 20th, 2014 as follows. Reduce benefit lines by $19,553 to adjust for revised cost projections. Increase food supplies line, food supplies line by $19,553 for anticipated cost increases and decrease general fund appropriation from $155,825 to $130,000 and adjust other fund revenues to offset. Bottom line expenditures and revenues remain the same as the first reading at $1,485,180. Okay, any questions? I, I saved mine for the last, not because they're the best ones, but just because I thought it was better to get through the motions first. Um, I, I echo everything that my fellow board members have said tonight. Um, we, we've worked very, very hard to balance the needs of the schools with the needs of the town. We're opening communications with the council. It's um, progressing. Uh, last night we had a very, I thought, very um, um, well-received and very thoughtful exchange at the budget workshop. I, I, I really hope that that dialogue and that cooperation can continue between our two organizations because I'll say it again, ultimately this is not our budget, it's not the council's budget, it's the town's budget. And as such, the town should have the final say on it. So I'm, I, I really hope that the community and the council will recognize the hard work and the good work that the people sitting before you have done and some of the people in the audience have done and allow this budget to go in front of the town like it needs to and let the town decide. Um, if that doesn't work, I'll try a gimmick. Um, in Bruce All Money, it was the 7th at 7. So I'll see you all the 7th at 7 at town council. Um, so that we can voice our concerns and then obviously hope to see you out at the polls on the 13th as well. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Seeing none, all in favor of approval of the last action item to amend the 2015 school nutrition budget as presented 7 plus 2, so moved. All right.
now we have 9.7. We have the approval of the 2013-14 superintendent's contract renewal and salary adjustment of 1.5%. Um, I'll introduce that one. That was um, something that we had been working on early last year that sort of got dragged out um, quite longer than we had expected. So um, that being said, that had been agreed upon and the contract goes through June 30th of 2016. Um, we had adjusted the date as well. So with that, I will make a motion to approve as presented. Second. Any questions concerning that? Chris? Uh, I just want to say that the reason for the delay had nothing to do with the negotiation process with the superintendent. It was um, <laughs> very amiable and, and very well received. So there was no difficulty in negotiation. It was more of a desire to get some of the other contracts in place before we moved forward with it. So that's. Thank you. Appreciate that. Anything else? Okay. All uh, in favor of approval as presented? Seven. I'm sorry, ladies, you can't vote on that one. But thank you. <laughs> but thank you. We, we appreciate that you would like to employ the superintendent further, such as we do. Um, all right, now we have 9.8, we have appointments, and I will turn that over to Dr. Entwistle. Um, you have appointments from the high school spring coaches as presented on the, uh, the stipend contract for spring 2014. You may wish to take that um, as one item. And we recommend approval. Just, I would just do the high school. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so um, the high school athletic appointments as presented I make motion to approve as presented. Do I have a second? Second. second. Thank you for the second. Any questions? Comments? Just, oh, uh, Chris. Yeah, sorry, quick question on the high school, the girls lacrosse assistant. Um, is that, is, where's Mike still here? Is that, is that still a position to be open? It's volunteered, I know, but that's not going to affect us in terms of number of players, that kind of stuff or anything, is it? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. No other questions? Seeing none, all in favor of approval as presented for the high school spring coaches. Seven. Okay, so I have one question. Other than that volunteer, do we have any other spring coaching positions that have not been filled that are still out there? Okay, thank you. All right. And 9.7.2, uh, middle school spring coaches. Um, this list, um, if you will allow an adjustment, um, We've carried over uh, the first two listings for boys lacrosse. Um, that, uh, that is um, not the case, so those would be removed. So any motion would need to include moving approval of the middle school spring coaching positions, um, not to include um, Lawson or Surratt. Okay. Uh, move approval for the middle school spring coachings with the exception of Lawson and Surratt as presented. Okay. Second. Any questions, comments? I will just throw one in there, um, just so we all know. On our agenda list here on the stipends, it says 9.7.1 and 9.7.2. It should be 9.8.1 and 9.8.2. So if we could just make that correction to the minutes, that would be great. Um, other than that, all in favor then of, uh, as presented with the removal of the Lawson and Surrette. Seven. Thank you very much. So moved. And that question then goes back out to Mr. Legage again. Is there anybody else? I see we have one little TBD down at the bottom there of a boys lacrosse, but I believe we removed that already. So, any other coaches? Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. So now we have 10.0. We have our committee reports. So I will look down to my right and I'll look to Ms. Perry for negotiations. Well, for the month of May, and I'll only stick with the month of May, uh, we, we have up, uh, upcoming uh, next week, we will be meeting with the bus drivers, and we will be meeting, uh, undisclosed date actually, uh, with the support staff. That's it? Okay. Thank you very much. 
Ms. Lang, anything on the long range facility no, plan? No, we haven't met since last meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Beely, the teacher evaluation. Yes, uh, teacher evaluation meeting coming up next week on when the 8th. Um, and we, are con we continue to make good progress. Um, we're looking at eye observation for next year as well as uh, you might see in the budget um, the Lenovo handheld. It, it's a digital thing that will allow uh, professionals to go in and observe each other and put it in on the computer very easily. So that's what's happening there. And then um, as far as communications goes, um, the, the board has already met with the Kiwanis Club, the WOW Seniors, um, and the Piper Shores. We are currently in discussions with arranging f to meet with at the Lions Club. Um, and following that, I, I intend to speak to Rotary. We have a Facebook page. We encourage everyone to go on our Facebook page and like us. <laughs> Please like us. So that you can keep current with what is happening. Um, so we appreciate that, and that's the latest. Okay, and this, the Facebook page is Scarborough, is it Scarborough Board of Education? Scarborough, yes, Maine. Scarborough, Maine. Scarborough Maine Board of Education. So you've got to type it in there correctly to be able to have it pull up on your search bar there so that you can go and like us. Scarborough, comma. Scarborough, comma, Maine. Okay. So... Um, Thank you very much. Okay. And then we have Mrs. Murphy with the Policy Committee. Policy Committee has been meeting. Um, we met Tuesday, in fact. Um, we are working on um, revising the policy regarding um, notices that go home with kids, especially for community groups, in an effort to go um, completely paperless for all of those um, outside groups that want to reach families and students. We see the value in it, that it's a community service to these families to see that what camps are available and um, opportunities outside of school, but um, it's labor intensive and creates a lot of work with the paper. So we're trying to figure out the best way to um, re revise that to go paperless. So All right. work in progress. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Shea, we have you as the business uh, liaison. We have not met since the last okay. meeting. All right. Just always want to make sure I hit all of them, just in case. Mr. Chiazzo, do you have any final comments as the Finance Committee? Well, maybe one. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, uh, thank you to my fellow board members for approving this budget. It was a lot of work this year. Um, the, the schedule was very, very compressed. Um, and, you know, it's always, it's never easy. We're always in the, the tough spot of making the hard, difficult decisions. But um, I look forward to facing the next phase together, and I look forward to getting the community support that we need to move this budget forward. Um, I think it is the best thing that our, for our kids, for our town, and um, I, I think we really, as always, if you do nothing, we ask you to come out two times a year on the 7th to please come and express your opinions to the council. And then again on the 13th, please support your schools. That's all. Thank you. And since I do have the last word, I would like to say thank you to our finance chair, Chris, for all his hard work, even while some of us were not around. And he worked very hard to attend the meetings that some of us didn't attend. So I'd like to say thank you. He, he, he does, yeah. So um, thank you again. Appreciate it. Um, appreciate everyone's hard work as well. Um, appreciate the leadership council as well as all the people sitting up here and Kate, you know, for her quick numbers and her getting back to us as, as fast as she can, which sometimes shocks me as how fast she does it. So um, thank you again. Yes. May I? Sure. May I remind the people the clip that you saw tonight? Uh, it, for the boys lacrosse, uh, was also advertising a lacrosse game between our boys and Cape Elizabeth on Saturday, and that will be a fundraiser for the autism uh, group in honor of that student who is playing for our team. And along those lines, uh, Saturday is also the Kids Fishing Derby at Bailey's. It starts around 10 o'clock. Okay. Thank you.
Can I just get clarification? I'm sorry. I, it was the lacrosse game at Cape, or is it in Scarborough? No, it's here. It is in Scarborough. Okay, thank you. What time? Sorry. What time is it? What time is that, Mr. Lagage? Lagage starts at 2:30. P.M. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, wanted, just wanted to throw are that we, out there. Are we back to a lot of time? You know, 6:30 p.m. Scarborough High School on the field. So. Seeing that we've completed everything on our agenda, I would be asking what the will of the board is this evening. Move. 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 Adjourn. Thank you. Do second. I have a second? Okay. All in favor of adjourning the meeting this evening. Seven plus two. So moved. Adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>